Did you know that painting your kitchen cabinets could be one of the worst financial decisions that you make in your home? I know everybody's always saying you should just paint your cabinets, replace your countertops, but these decisions can cost you a lot of money. And when you go to sell at any point, whether it be a year, five years, 10 years from now, are you going to get that return? Today, I'm gonna to talk about a real life true story, and it's actually my house. I'm going to show you the house that we ended up buying last year with the kitchen cabinets that were not painted. And I'm going to talk to you about should the seller have painted these cabinets before they listed the house. I promise you by the end of this video, you are going to be an expert on what updates you should be putting into your house that will get you a return and what ones will not get you a return. And I promise you, if you pay attention to this video, you could be making an additional thousand, two thousand, ten thousand, a hundred thousand dollars just by watching this video. So stick around to the end. So as many of you know, we actually moved last year and the house that we bought had been on the market for eight months. Now as a real estate agent, I understand what's good in the house, what's bad in the house. I can see through things. And this house had been on the market for eight months. Part of the reason it was on for eight months is you can say because of this kitchen. Now, many people will say you need to paint your kitchen cabinets because it will make people think that the house is newer. When we were looking at this house, obviously this is a little dated. The house is built in about 2000. And so this kitchen is original and it does look a little dated along with the countertops. Now the house that we were coming from was gorgeous because we did everything that we wanted to do in our home and we had no deferred maintenance and we updated the kitchen. I mean, we had this massive like 60 inch refrigerator. I mean, it was crazy, but we did it exactly how we wanted. And it was really, really important for us because my husband is, I call him an amateur professional chef. He's fantastic. We're doing a YouTube channel on him as well. I'll make sure that you see his stuff, but he cooks all the time. He does all the grocery shopping and he does all the cooking in our household, which is fantastic. I mean, I love it. Okay, ladies, don't, you know, don't get jealous, but you should be because this is honestly like the best thing ever. So the kitchen, as you can see, is really, really important to him. So we came from an amazing kitchen. It was exactly the way we wanted it. My husband loved this kitchen. So you can imagine when we're coming into a new house and we're going from this old, beautiful house that had this amazing kitchen, is this the kitchen that we wanted? And should the seller have repainted these cabinets? Would it have made it better for us? Would it have been more attractive to us? Would the house have been on the market for eight months, maybe. Maybe not. So, you know, you can't really answer that in a vacuum. It's very hard to answer that question by only looking at one picture. You have to look at the whole house. You have to figure out what stage, what category is your house in? How many updates does it need overall versus the singular things that you think a buyer may like? So now what I want to do is I want to open up some of the other pictures for you to show you the rest of the house to see if the seller made a good decision on not painting these cabinets. Now, remember the house had been on the market for eight months. That was a long time in a hot market. Of course, you know, I always talk about price, right? Price is always too high if the house isn't sold. But let's really dig into these pictures a little bit and see what was the main issue with this house. Okay, can you guess what was wrong with this house? Some of you may love this tile, but this tile, it was this huge, gigantic, like 12 inch tile, and it was so dated and it was like kind of this little bit of a pinky tone and it was everywhere. Now, my husband didn't even notice it. He thought it was fine, but I was like, I cannot live in this house with that tile. Now to replace that tile was a really, really big job. And that probably is the reason that the house was on the market for eight months. Yes, because when buyers are looking at this, they're saying, oh my gosh, look at that flooring. It's going to be so expensive to take up. And so that's most likely why people pass the house over. So now I'm going to ask you, should those kitchen cabinets have been painted? I think you're going to answer my question for me. No, they shouldn't have. And the reason why is because there was a major item in this house, which was the reason the house was not selling. The house was not selling because of the tile. The house was not selling because it didn't look updated. That tile was a reason somebody was not going to buy the house. So again, you cannot look at this in just a vacuum. You have to look at the whole picture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my fix flip formula. And this is going to kind of put your house into a singular category, depending on what condition it's in. And from that category, I'm going to be able to tell you exactly what you should be doing and what you shouldn't be doing. Now, 
At the end of this video, I'm actually gonna show you the flooring that we put in. So before we get into this and I talk to you about what category your home is in, I wanna make sure you don't miss it. My seller's playbook, the link is below. And this is kind of basic. This is gonna start you on your path about what items are too expensive that you should not be updating when you're going to think about selling your house or even if you're not thinking about selling your house, what things should you not be putting money into and what should you be putting into? The link is below, it's absolutely free. And I promise you, this could make you a a lot of money when you go to sell your home. So let's talk about my fix and flip formula. I've put categories for your home and I want you to figure out what category is your house in in this fix and flip formula. So the first one that we have is restoration required. Now restoration required is like a complete gut. Okay so if this is a house maybe you've inherited you don't know much about and the mechanicals are old there's a lot of deferred maintenance and it's not updated. This is restoration required. The next one is concealable condition. Now this is where maybe you've done a few updates in the house. Maybe your kitchen might be updated or maybe it's like 10 years old or maybe you know a bathroom is updated but it really has old mechanicals and there's a lot of deferred maintenance. The third one is called surface shine. This is probably my least favorite category for you to be in and that's because this is old mechanicals. This is lots of deferred maintenance but you've spent money updating the house. This is the one that's going to to cause the most harm when you go to sell for you because you put a lot of money into the updates but you haven't thought about the foundation of the house you haven't thought about the fundamentals of the house and this is the one that can really be dangerous for you when you go to sell the next one is my favorite category which is unpolished potential now a lot of my viewers are older and have had their home for 30 40 years and this is many of the homes fall into this condition and this is where your mechanicals are updated there's no deferred maintenance but but your house is not super updated. Maybe it's dated. Now, I love this category because there's so much potential. And I will tell you, buyers love that base. So this category here, if you are in this category, and if you're the person that's saying, should I paint my cabinets? This is where you can make the most potential. And then the last one is modern move-in. So I would call modern move-in anything that's newer, anything that's been updated kind of in the last seven years or so. You have no deferred maintenance. All the mechanicals are newer. So modern move-in is is for those of you who've really, really spent a lot of time updating your homes. But I don't want you other viewers to think that if your home doesn't look like that, it can't sell. That's the mistake that people make. They're trying to get to modern move-in when it's going to cost them a lot of money to get there. And many times you can't fake out buyers if you're trying to be modern move-in. Remember, if you haven't updated your mechanicals and you have a lot of deferred maintenance, you are in that bad surface shine category that I mentioned. So go ahead and pick out which category are you in right now? So let's dig in a little bit further into these categories and what you need to do. So restoration required. Like I said, this is pretty much, it's the house really probably isn't livable. I don't want you to spend much money on anything. I really don't want you to do anything other than probably fix those items that might be a disclosure issue. I don't want you to put money into the house. I don't want you to paint it. I don't want you to stage it. I don't want you to do any of that. Now the key with this one is that it has to be priced correctly. If it's not priced correctly, you will sit on the market a very long time because the buyer for this home, they're not a lot of them. I mean, you have to really think about it. It's either investor or an end user that has the time and the money to go ahead and update the house. So if you're in this category, don't spend a ton updating. Concealable condition. This has old mechanicals, deferred maintenance, and maybe a little bit updated. So in this one, you know, like I say, you can't really put lipstick on this pig, maybe a little bit, but I only want you to do what is kind of necessary to make it show better. And showing better would be maybe painting, maybe staging. I don't want you to put too much money in because if you do that, you end up in that surface shine category, which is where I do not want you to be. So you need to really think about things that you're doing in this house. But the one thing I will tell you is clean, 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 like clean all the time. If you're thinking you're moving next year, I want you to start getting a cleaning person or cleaning your house every single week. Yes, every single week, because it is going to take time if you hadn't had that clean to get the baseboards clean. Things Things like that. Clean does sell. It can be the biggest return that you have. Also, this one I'd like you to fix the broken items in the home. So let's say your fence is kind of falling down. Now that's not a disclosure item, but that's something that a buyer is going to be like, oh, I have to fix that fence. So anything that you find that's broken, I want you to fix. But remember, try not to spend too much money in this category. Surface shine. Like I said, you do not want to be here because this one, you're going to get fooled out. You're going to say, my house is updated. It looks great. Maybe you have a new 
kitchen, new bathrooms, you've done flooring. It looks fantastic. So you're going to get a high price for the house. The buyers are going to come in and then they're going to have the inspection and one of two things are going to happen. They're going to ask you for a huge credit or they're going to back out. I promise I've had this happen. And this is the issue is that buyers are being faked out that there is something wrong with the property because what you're doing is you're faking them out by making everything in the house look good, but you have neglected the fundamentals of the home. And buyers don't like that because if they see one thing that's broken and they're thinking, oh my gosh, all of these other things are going to be a mess, even though they've spent so much money updating. So that might be where the buyers might say, oh my gosh, there's water in the basement or the roof is leaking or something like this. Stay out of the surface shine category. Now, I will tell you a lot of the people who are in this category have overspent on updates in their home that they're not going to get out and they are hung up on getting the number that they want for the house. And that can really be a problem too. So they may get the number that they want for the house right out of the gate. They may have multiple offers, but what will happen is those buyers are going to come and they're going to do the inspection and it will be a disaster. So if you are in this category, you need to make sure that you're willing to give a credit when the inspection comes around or make sure you're fixing what the buyers are requesting. If you are in this category, it is the most dangerous category for you to be in when you're selling your home. And if you download my seller's playbook with the link below, that is going to give you basically those updates that you need to make that are not going to cost you a lot of money. The purpose of that playbook is to keep you out of this category. The updates that I'm talking about are not super expensive, but they can get you into a different category, which is going to get you more money. I don't want you to throw your money away. So make sure you download the playbook below. Next up, my favorite category, unpolished potential. And the reason I love this one is because it's usually sellers that love their property. They've taken really, really good care of it. They understand the importance of having their mechanical service, their HVAC, their air, having their roof cleaned, having the gutters cleaned, power wash, things like that. They do this over time. And so if they were to do this right before they go to sell, it's going to cost a lot of money and many people can't afford it. I love walking into a home that has unpolished potential because I know those sellers have taken really, really good care of the house. And those are the people who usually are great sellers too. They understand if there's something that the inspection, they're probably going to fix it. Now, this does not have any deferred maintenance and this has newer mechanicals, but the house is not updated. And when I'm talking updated, I mean probably within the last seven years. And maybe the kitchen was updated 15 years ago or the bathrooms and maybe they're dated and everybody is going to say, oh, this all needs to be redone. But buyers love a great base. They really, really do, especially if the home is livable. Because some of the buyers will say, you know what? I really think that we can live with this for now because the condition is so good and we can update over time. Now, this is the category where there is the most stuff that I actually give you to kind of do to get your house ready. This is where you can kind of fake out the buyers. The issue is that you can't do this without help from an agent. And the reason why is because an agent is going to understand your specific location, your market, and is there in the house to say, yeah, this is a good call or this is not. Now, this would have been great with the house that I bought because the agent would have said to the sellers, and maybe the agent did say to the sellers, you shouldn't paint the cabinets because the flooring is what is really not going to get people into the house. What I want you to understand is if you were in this category, is there something in the home that is going to make buyers repel or not buy it? That can be a bad location, a bad layout. Maybe it doesn't have a basement. In Chicago, lots of basements. That could be a reason. Is the flooring really bad? And is that a huge fix. So that was a reason people were not going to buy the home. So even if they had painted the cabinets, even if they had put the countertops in, it wouldn't have helped because the floor was still an issue. So are you going to be better off replacing that flooring, even though it might be really, really expensive? And then maybe painting the cabinets or maybe not. So it's all in this hierarchy. And the only way you can know that is by having an agent come in. I do have agents in your neighborhood, in your area. I have a huge network of agents across the country. I have a link below. I can find you an agent anywhere in the country. I will make sure that they focus in your area and their experience. So go ahead and click on that link today and there is no charge to you. So if you are unpolished potential, honestly, this is a great place to be. Don't be freaked out, don't be scared, but make sure you get that agent in there to talk to you about what updates you could make. Okay, so now I think my dog is behind me. Hollywood, come here. It's, th <laughs> it's a thunderstorm and my dog is a big baby here. So sorry, she's back and forth. I didn't even really 
really notice, but she is, she's a cutie, but she gets very, very afraid of thunderstorms and it's going to rain here. And the last category is modern move-in. Now this is no deferred maintenance, newer mechanicals, and the house has been updated. And when I say updated, I mean probably like within the last seven years or so. So this is really where I would have put my home before. We did a lot of work when we lived there and we spent a lot of money. Now we did make a great return when we sold the house. We sold it for higher than anybody in our neighborhood had ever sold it for. That's really because I understood what to do, but my husband is the, really the one who does all the maintenance in the house. He's the one who's going through and making sure everything looks good. I mean, we have a fountain in our new house and I am telling you like this fountain, he is out there trying to figure out how to make it better, how to get it cleaner. Like these are the little things that are going to get you to modern moving. If you think you're gonna do all of this before you go to sell your house, don't. It's just not worth it. You're gonna waste money because modern moving, we spent a lot of money on everything we did. I mean, new windows, new kitchen, new bathrooms. We've had to put in a new deck because it was falling down. We did all new landscaping. We had pu actually put on a sunroom addition. All of this stuff was incredibly expensive. And when we sold, yes, we sold at the high of the market. We also got a great return on it, but we did not cover all of the money that we put into the house. So if you are in modern moving, there is a very good chance that you will not get out every penny that you put into it, but your house will sell quicker. I'm telling you, your house will sell quicker and it will sell at a premium. Just because you put in $200,000 does not mean you get $200,000 back. You might get 150 and if you hadn't done that, you might have lost 100. So you need to think about the modern moving. It's yes, a goal that everybody sort of strives for when they're selling their house. But if that's not you and that's not how you've lived there for the past few years, take it off your mind. You do not need to get to that point. Staging this house is not even really a necessity because most likely you probably have it looking good. And so staging is one of those things that you might just want to bring in some accessories on this. You don't really have to bring in new furniture because it is a premium. Buyers are going to see it and it's going to go through the inspection without an issue. Now, before you embark on this, I really need you to think about what I said earlier is that do you have something in your home that will prevent somebody from buying the house? Like they're just not going to buy the home. If you do, all of these things that I've talked about today may be another issue. If you literally have no backyard and you decide you're going to update your kitchen, update your bathrooms, and you still have no backyard, a buyer is going to say, I don't care. We're not buying the house because there's no backyard. So you really need to understand, is there something in your home that a buyer is really not going to like, and they won't buy your house because of it. The other thing that you need to be thinking about is the quality of the work that you're doing. Now, if you're doing poor shoddy quality, you're going to end up in that surface shine category. And that is just, it's just not a great place to be. So the quality does have to be good. You have to get professionals out there, especially if you're like, yep, we're painting the cabinets. If you're painting the cabinets, they have to be done correctly. They literally have to be done correctly. Otherwise you could be making a huge mistake and throwing away money and you're not going to get a return because people are going to come in and they're going to say, oh my gosh, these look terrible. We're going to have to repaint them. While it seems like, should I paint my cabinets? Yes, it's an easy thing to do. There is so much more to this question and I hope that I've been able to sort of answer that. And what I want to do is show you actually what we did when we moved into this house. So the picture that I'm showing you right now, as you can see, is the horrible tile that was in the house. And I'm telling you it was horrible. Even though my husband says it did not bother him at all, it was terrible. Even my mom said so. And this is what we did. So we changed out the flooring when we moved in. Now, I think by changing out the flooring, we added an incredible value to the home. I think the money that we put in would actually get us more out if we were going to sell right now. The problem is, is it was a very difficult, laborious and expensive project to do, but we did calculate that in the cost of purchasing the home. So you can see we put in this more trendy kind of wood type flooring and it just makes a whole difference. And there's Hollywood again for you. I know Hollywood is my buddy today. So do you see how the question, should I paint my cabinets, is just so incredibly complicated. And I know many of you want me there just to answer this question for you, but you can download that playbook. And I've got a lot of information in there. In addition, I'll send you emails throughout the course of the next couple months that will kind of tell you some things that maybe are a little more personal. I also do have options if you do want to email me your kitchen and I can maybe do a video on it. So if you've got some questions about specific pictures, painting your cabinets or updating things in your home, shoot me an email, include them in there, and I'll make sure I talk about them on an upcoming video.